I am Dr. Krishna Das, and I, I am from Guwahati. I am working here in a private hospital. So today I am going to discuss on a practical approach to blood gas analysis in newborn. So uh, in uh, components of EBG, there are some major values like pH, PaCO2, and PaO2. And there are some calculated values, uh, there are bicarbonate, SaO2, base axis, some electrolyte values and metabolite values like glucose and lactate. Then there are some values of uh, abnormal hemoglobin like met hemoglobin and alveolar arterial gradient and arterial alveolar ratio. These two ratio uh, help us to know the proper effusion uh, uh, oxygen between alveoli and uh, pulmonary capillaries. Then we can enter some data like temperature, hemoglobin of the baby and FIO2 being received by the baby. Next, what are the indications for blood gas analysis? So, uh, first is any sick baby as part of initial assessment. Next, ventilated babies to guide ongoing treatment. As a guide to assess need for the mechanical ventilation. As a tool to monitor response to treatment like volume replacement, correction of acidosis, etc. And as a guide to fluid and electrolyte management. Next, what are the normal ABC values? The pH is uh, 7.35 to 7.45. pH CO2 is 35 to 45 millimeter mercury. PaO2 is 50 to 70 millimeter mercury. And SO2 is 90 to 95 percent. And bicarbonate value in term BB is 22 to 26 milligram per liter. And in PTAM, it is 18 to 22 milligram per liter. And base axis is minus four to plus four milliequivalent per liter. Then uh, uh, what are the primary acid-base disorders? There are four primary acid disorder uh, depending on the values of pH, bicarbonate and carbon dioxide. First, metabolic acidosis is there when pH is less than 7.35 and uh, there bicarbonate value is less than 22 milliequivalent per deciliter. Next, metabolic alkalosis, your pH value is more than 7.45 and bicarbonate value is more than uh, 26 milliequivalent per deciliter. Next, uh, respiratory acidosis, your pH value is less than 7.35 and carbon dioxide value is more than 45 millimeter mercury. And in respiratory alkalosis, pH value is more than 7.45 and carbon dioxide value is more than less than 35 millimeter mercury. Then, some important steps for ABG interpretation. So first, we have to check whether the pH is normal or abnormal. If the value is between 7.35 to 7.45, it is normal. But if it is less than 7.35, it is acidosis. And if it is more than 7.45, it is alkalosis. Then we have to see the values of carbon dioxide and bicarbonate. If the carbon dioxide value is high, it means it is respiratory acidosis. And if the bicarbonate value is low, it means it is metabolic alkalosis. Acidosis. Next, uh, we have to check for the alkalosis. Uh, if the carbon dust value is high, if the bicarbonate value is high, it's metabolic alkalosis. And if uh, carbon dust value is low, this is respiratory alkalosis. Uh, then we have to check for the relationship between uh, carbon dust and bicarbonate. Means the change of direction of the carbon dust and bicarbonate. If the direction of change is either increasing or decreasing, uh, both value, carbon dioxide and bicarbonate, it, it means this simple metabolic or respiratory acidosis. But the direction of change is in opposite direction, means uh, carbon dioxide increasing and bicarbonate is in increasing, it means mixed metabolic or respiratory acidosis. Similarly, we have to see in the alkalosis uh, also, the same thing, if the uh, direction of change is same, it means simple metabolic or respiratory alkalosis. But in opposite direction, it means mixed metabolic or respiratory alkalosis. Then we have to check for compensation. So if the pH value is near normal, it means it is compensated and this simple acid based disorder which educate compensation. But pH value is not normal, it's abnormal, it means it is uncompensated, suggests presence of additional acid based disorder or insignificant time for compensation. And similarly, in here also, if the pH value is near normal, it means it is compensated in this simple acid-based disorder with adequate compensation. 
Otherwise, it is uncompensated and it suggests presence of additional seed based disorder or insignificant time for compensation. Next, we have to, next, we have to say is the compensation is okay. The body tries to overcome either a respiratory or metabolic dysfunction in an attempt to return the pH into the normal range. For a respiratory disease, that is respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, the body develops metabolic compensation through the kidney, that is through bicarbonate. And for metabolic disorder, that is metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, the body develops respiratory compensation through the lungs, that is through carbon dioxide. Then acid based changes and compensatory response. Uh, so, if in metabolic acidosis, the primary event will be decreased bicarbonate and compensation will be decreased carbon dioxide. And the rate of compensation will be for one milliequivalent per liter decrease in bicarbonate, uh, carbon dioxide value decreases by 1 to 1.5 millimeter mercury. Or, or, or we can use the equation PCO2 is equal to 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 plus minus 2. And in metabolic alkalosis, the primary event will be increased bicarbonate and compensation will be increased carbon dioxide. And rate of compensation will be for one milliequivalent per liter increase in bicarbonate, of carbon dioxide increases by 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter mercury, or the equation is 0 0.7 into bicarbonate level plus 21 plus minus 2. And for uh, respiratory acidosis, primary event is uh, increased carbon dioxide and compensation will be increased by carbonate. And in acute cases, uh, it, the rate of compensation will be for 10 millimeter increase in carbon dioxide, bicarbonate increases by one milliequivalent per liter. And for chronic cases, uh, for 10 milliliter increase in uh, carbon dioxide, bicarbonate increases by uh, four milliequivalent per liter. And similarly, in respiratory acidosis, uh, the primary event is uh, in decrease in carbon dioxide and compensation will be decreased by carbonate. And rate of compensation will be for 10 millimeter decrease in carbon dioxide, bicarbonate in decreases by 1 to 3 milliequivalent per liter. And in chronic uh, cases, uh, rate of compensation will be for 10 millimeter mercury decrease in carbon dioxide, bicarbonate decreases by 2 to 5 milliequivalent per liter. So there may be some error in arterial blood gas analysis and interpretation. Like there may be some excess heparin in the sample, or there may be some air bubbles in the sample. So there will be uh, low, their value will be low carbon dioxide and high oxygen. So you have to always avoid excess heparin in the syringe, or there should be good seal and remove air immediately if done during sampling. And you should not delay in analysis uh, and should process as early as possible. And if delayed, sample should be kept in refrigerator at 4 degrees centigrade. Next, we have to always enter the void temperature before analyzing the sample, otherwise there may be some error in the blood test analysis. And regarding sampling site, uh, arterial blood is always preferred because it reflects actual values of uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide. And if it's not, it not possible to do an arterial blood, we should do the do from capillary blood from hill, but we should, uh, should do articulation of capillary blood by warming hill by applying a warm towel. Thank you, Dr. Krishna. It was uh, very clear, and nice presentation, brief, and you covered most of the important aspects in summary. So I think if you agree, uh, Jyoti will share this with the others, the compensation part and all are very clear. So hopefully it will help the others. So can you stop sharing? Uh, we can have a few minutes for questions based on this or any questions you have based on the uh, lectures that you've watched. Uh, when this compensation starts, suppose there is an acid-based disorder, we uh, establish this uh, metabolic or respiratory acidosis or whatever. So when this compensation actually starts within few hours or like in acute phase, can you try to answer it yourself? What do you understand of it? Dr. Pratin, you want to try answering? What do you think happens? Which compensation is quicker? So in the website, in the PPT and in there, it's written that it's a 12 to 24 hours uh, acute phase. So it's different depending on which compensation you're talking about, isn't it? Dr. Krishna, you want to answer or I'll answer? So you answer, sir. 
So Sorry. with the respiratory compensation is going to be much quicker, isn't it? It's almost simultaneous. You see an acidotic baby, they are already breathing fast and the carbon dioxide washout is also very efficient. So the respiratory compensation happens in minutes to hours. The metabolic compensation is very slow. That's why in the table she presented, the metabolic compensation for the acute is just for 10 uh, millimeters of carbon dioxide. It's only 1 milli equivalent of bicarb. That's corrected even by 24 hours. So it's going to take time for the kidney to conserve bicarb uh, to help with the metabolic. So the compensation for uh, metabolic problems are quicker. The compensation for respiratory, primary respiratory problems are slower and more incomplete. And also, as we discussed earlier, the compensation is never complete. It brings it to the close to the range. But if it's very complete, you should think whether it's a mixed disorder. Uh, Dr. Momita, do, do you want to ask anything on this topic? No, sir. Okay. I think uh, it's a complicated topic. And in terms of regular practice, as we discussed in the group, I mean, the practical implication is what exactly uh, you want to uh, act, act on. I mean, Dr. Latil's presentation coming up next will be covering the practical aspect of it. And in terms of... Uh, Clinical relevance, most of the problems we face is either uh, respiratory acidosis or mixed acidosis. And in the, uh, I mean, the intensive care setup, you often see metabolic acidosis as a primary problem if the child has sepsis, NEC, and so on. So acidosis is going to be the primary problem in most of the acute situations, but in BPD or uh, chronic lung disease babies, babies on diuretics, we start seeing metabolic uh, alkalosis and we allow permissive hypercapnia, as you know. So as we uh, start allowing the respiratory acidosis to continue, the metabolic compensation starts. And these babies often have a high bicarb. And if the same baby goes into shock or anything, it causes a confusing picture. So that's where you are um, more, uh, I mean, the more complex uh, calculations may come into the picture. But it's a very rare scenario in clinical practice. And in most of the situations, you can manage without going for those complications. So, uh, Dr. Nirmala, uh, you had a comment uh, that you want things to be a little more basic. Uh, do you want to, uh, I mean, start sharing your questions so that we can address it more specifically? Dr. Nirmala, we are all colleagues here, so don't be shy to speak up and uh, no one should be hesitating. Maybe she's... Uh... She's not there, I think, so I'll just ask to unmute. Okay, sure. Uh, Dr. Latil joined or not yet? No, no, sir, not yet. I've sent her a message. Okay. She's not so, seen that I'm not able to call her because she's not answering her phone. I think uh, one of you have asked about the compensation. I think uh, she has clearly put the slide, which is quite simple. So this will be shared in the group. And uh, so no need to repeat that. But in terms of compensation, how to calculate, it's uh, mentioned different formulas. Dr. Satish presentation has a, a brief mention of it and uh, Dr. Razak also. And now what uh, Dr. Krishna presented also is quite a useful one. So this will be shared soon after. So please go through that slide where she talks about calculating compensation. But it's a rough guide. I, eyeballing the gas, you would know if there is compensation. The direction of change, again, Dr. Razak's presentation has a very simple acronym to remember that. So uh, if you know the direction of change is in the same direction, it's a simple metabolic problem. If it's a metabolic acidosis, you have bicarbonate reducing and the carbon dioxide also reduces as a compensation to wash. Yeah, Dr. Nirmala. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, regarding the arterial sampling about yes. the uh, hyperine, how um, how much heparin should we take? It's just like flushing the series, that's it? See, I mean, uh, nowadays we have uh, capillary tubes which are heparinized if your machine allows that. That's the best one because the sample size is only 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 ml. So in terms of repeated sampling, if you don't have the capillaries, uh, uh, capillaries which are heparinized, you can heparinize it yourself and uh, using the iron pellet but again, if your machine doesn't take capillary tubes, you have to go for the heparinase syringes. Best is to take the commercial preparations because when you are mixing, we used to do that when we were training and obviously there is a problem with that. If the heparin becomes more, I mean, you'd be using the one in 5,000 heparin. You use a little more heparin and heparin is acidic in pH as well. So it will drop the pH and 
uh, yeah, you uh, take a 0.1, 0.2 ml uh, plunge the syringe and push it out, but uh, it's not going to be that accurate because there is a chance of uh, leaving some apparent in the system. So better to take the ready-made. Is it expensive? Is that why you're not using it? Yes, sir. So uh, I'm Try not to really... look at batch purchases, bulk purchases may be cheaper because the reliability and it's also less time consuming and it will be quicker. So most of the units here, we go for the ready-made heparin uh, syringes and capillary tubes also check if your manufacturer for the blood gas machine will give that option because it's much easier to sample, uh, especially if you're doing just a gas and no other blood tests. Uh, Dr. Mumita and Dr. Samarth have their hands up. Dr. Mumita, you want to go first? Yeah, Dr. Mumita. Sir, uh, in case of respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, there is uh, some acute or chronic compensation. But in case of metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, there is no such acute or chronic uh, compensation. Sir, why is the difference? Just to repeat your question in metabolic. Sir, in case of respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, uh, yes. We found that there is some acute or chronic state of compensation, but mm -hmm. in case of metabolic acidosis and alkalosis, there is uh, no such acute or chronic state. Why it's is that? Because a quicker correction with the metabolic, um, because the carbon dioxide washout or uh, accretion is quicker. So it's more acute. The chronic part is not as marked. Of course, you will have the element of it, but it's not going to be as marked. While in uh, Respiratory problems, the metabolic compensation is very slow. You may not notice anything till 12 to 24 hours. So that's why you have the differentiation. Uh, Dr. Samarth? Yes, sir. Good evening. Mm -hmm. I had one question. Uh, initially, I wasn't I wasn't uh, trying to put it because, but since we have time, I want to ask this. Uh, I've been using an ABG machine, which, which is a mobile transport machine, which is yes. not that accurate. It's called ISTAT, and, uh, is it? ISTAT, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And mm -hmm. there is the no system of putting an arterialized capillary uh, unit in this. Mm -hmm. So I was planning to upgrade it into a full-size uh, ABG machine. So mm -hmm. I wanted to know from you which one is a good purchase that I can make. You have to look at the local servicing options because blood gas machine, right, calibration, servicing, these are very important. And also look at the running costs, the cartridge costs. You have cartridges with different uh, options. Most right, of sir. us use the ones with electrolytes and bilirubin as well. So it kind of uh, saves you. You okay. may have to send one or two samples for that baby in the lab as well to counter check. Right, but the sir. ones which have that uh, and which is not too expensive to process, even some of them have very expensive calibration kit. So right, you sir. have to calibrate it at regular intervals, especially if you're not using it very often. Okay, even uh, if you're not using it, you still have to calibrate at certain time intervals. So it becomes expensive. So okay. these are the points. Roche is a good brand. Obviously, most of us use uh, Roche, but... You have to be uh, familiar with what is available in the market and also the right. uh, uh, options. Yeah. Right, right, right. 